Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here. So today we're going to be talking about streamers. So what is a streamer and how do you connect it? The beginner's guide. That's what we're talking about today. But first of all, what, why should you care? Why would you even need a streamer? Can't you just use your computer? And yes, you can. You can use your computer, your laptop, and some audio files will use uh, stuff like um, Apple's, what was it, Tujin? What? Mac mini? Yeah, Mac mini. Okay. Um, and, you know, crazy power supply, you know, upgrades and stuff like that to do that. No problem. That is one way of doing it. But today, we're specifically talking about dedicated streaming devices, such, such as the Blue Note 2i, Inuis, out of EX that they just came out with, and so on. But then why though? Why does it exist if you can just use a computer? Well, the benefits of using a streamer would be that it's more convenient, first of all. It has features, which we will talk about in this video, that will make your life a lot easier. And Avid Audio Files, such as myself, will convince you that um, using a dedicated streamer sounds better than using a computer because computers are inherently noisy devices. In fact, when you use a computer, you may run into problems like Tujin, where he uh, you know, uh, got noise through USB, right? Yeah. So uh, these are all reasons to use a dedicated streamer. But most importantly, in this video, I don't wanna go into too much of that, you know, the sound differences with a computer and stuff like that, but kind of bring a light into what a streamer can do for you and what features it provides. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't have the features, then you can't use it. So if you look in the back of these streamers, you see a lot of inputs and outputs. And I know it may be kind of scary right now, but I promise you by the end of this video, you will have no problems deciphering each one. Now, so why are there so many inputs and outputs? Well, these inputs and outputs are all different on streamers. So you need to know which one is used for which so that you can connect it to the right devices. And in fact, all streamers are not equal. Meaning there are streamers that are dedicated streamers, meaning all they do is send a digital signal, right? From whatever your streaming service is. And then you output that through a digital output. Now we'll talk about the connectivity a little bit later on, but just know that there's a streamer, a standalone streamer, and then there are integrated units like a DAC streamer, which means the DAC is already built inside the streamer so that the digital decoding from ones and zeros to analog signal is already done for you. And then there's the third type that's quite um, popular these days. It's the one that has a DAC built in, but also a preamplifier built in. Now these units have volume control, either via app like the Blue Note, Blue Sound Note 2i, or a volume controller like the Matrix. So it can use, be used as three different things, a streamer, a source, right, a DAC, and a preamp. So these are the three different devices that you will see often in the market. So now let's talk about how to connect these devices, starting with the standalone streamer. So standalone streamers will have digital outputs and probably only digital outputs. Now, what does that mean? It means you will have optical, coax, stuff like I2S, and so on. Now, unfortunately, all we have here are DAC slash streamers, because that's popular these days, but even some of these guys have something called a digital output. And we'll talk about why that is in a second, but just know that standalone streamers have digital outputs and how you connect these are via optical, coax, USB, I2S, and I would choose personally I2S first and second USB because these give you the highest definition of audio. Simple as that for now. Now, when you go and connect these, you will connect it to a DAC because remember, you're just sending a digital signal digital to audio conversion has not already been done. So you need to send it to a DAC. So once you send it to a DAC, you will just input it to a optical input on the DAC. All DACs will have this optical input, coax input, I2S sometimes. More DACs should have that by the way, or USB. Now in these cases, now the DAC conversion is done, you can send it to your preamplifier or your integrated amplifier. Now there's other scenarios, for example, like Tujin's Hegel which has a DAC already built in to an integrated amplifier. In those cases, those will also have coax input, you know, uh, USB input, and so on, that you can connect your dedicated streamer to. So again, very simple. Now, second unit that we have that we, you know, is very popular these days, DAC slash streamer. Now these streamers have something called analog output. And what these analog outputs are 
are essentially just RCA. And you see these you know, everywhere. So another form is RC, uh, sorry, XLR, which is balanced formation here. So RCA and balanced outputs. Now these are something called analog outputs. Because the DAC is already built into the units, the, di the digital to audio conversion, sorry, analog conversion does not need to happen again. So instead of outputting it to a DAC this time, you're outputting a analog signal. Now these analog signals can go to a preamplifier or an integrated unit. Now even the ones like Tugens Hegel that already has a digital uh, converter inside, those will still have analog inputs, usually. The good ones usually have analog inputs. In these cases, you just put it into the analog input and you can run it that way. Now, the third one that's the most uh, common these days, well, not common, but preferable because everyone wants everything inside is the preamplifier one. So now it's a streamer, a DAC, and a preamplifier. Now, the preamplifier functionality, you know, the sound quality is not the best in these type of units, but I've seen some good ones. Now, when you have a preamplifier built in, that means that you can control volume on the uh, app usually or by a volume knob or a remote or a remote now in these cases uh, you are outputting directly to a standalone amplifier or a power speaker now i wouldn't suggest a integrated amplifier because if you do you're running two preamplifiers because integrated units will usually have preamplifiers built in and running two preamplifiers is never a good thing now there are exceptions where even if you do have a preamplifier functionality, you um, essentially have something in the settings called fixed output. Now if you go to uh, configure that fixed output, then yes, you can connect it to the integrated amplifier to use as a, you know, just a DAC slash streamer instead of as a preamplifier. So next, let me ask you, what services do you use? Meaning, do you use Tidal, Spotify, Amazon Music, Amazon Music, Amazon HD, mm -hmm. Apple Music, Cobas, uh, Cobas, whatever it is? You have to remember that streamers don't support every single one. Some streamers support specific ones. Some streamers like the Blue Note 2i, Blue Sound Note 2i, supports like virtually every single one of them, and that's why it's so popular because it does. But you have to ask yourself which one, which streamer supports what I play. Second, the program has to be compatible, meaning usually to play to a streamer, you have to have an app or a, a software like Rune. For example, myself, I use Rune, but there's other ones out there uh, that comes with the unit as a companion, right? So there's companion apps like Blue Oz, for example, and uh, Matrix has the MA app. But usually these apps are, in my opinion, not the best. Some of them are better than others, but usually they all work the same. They let you store music in one place so that you can play to your streamer. Uh, you know, it's a kind of like a organizer in, in, in a way. Convenience. It's for convenience. Um, there's other ways which you can play really fast, like AirPlay, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, which means you just open your phone and play directly to your streamer without any, you know, interface, interface in between or app in between. So. These are the ways you can connect and these are things that you have to understand uh, before you buy a streamer so that you know how your connectivity will work. Compatibility is a big issue because not everything is compatible. For example, the Matrix Audio only has, the, the Mini only has AirPlay, which means if I'm an Android user, it's not compatible. Now, after all that, now you have a streamer. Now, listen, there's other stuff that comes with a streamer as like a kind of like a bonus that maybe beneficial for you. Now these are things like the capability to play your NAS drives. If you have a large storage of music already stored somewhere, then you might want to play that to your streamer so you have your music all in one space. So a lot of streamers do have that capability. For example, the Matrix Element I has the ability to take NAS drives, so does my Inuis, and so on. Now internal storage is another matter. For example, out of these, um, if I'm correct, Inuis is the only one that has one terabyte. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong there, but the point here is that there's internal storage, which means that you can store music internally. Uh, for example, if I rip a CD, then it will store into my uh, Rune automatically inside the Inuis. Now, I just said CD uh, Ripper. 
yes, if you have a large collection of CDs, like myself, that you might want to rip your CDs instead of buying new music or streaming, maybe it's not available on Tidal, then you want to rip your CDs. And that's why I got the invoice myself with my own money because I want to rip my CDs so I have it available for me. And I don't have to keep playing CDs. Now maybe you would like playing CDs. So some of these units have CD players like the Iota VX, which has you know a CD player built in so that you can play CD as well. Now, these are all separate functions that may be beneficial to you. Internal storage, ability to play NAS drives, which sometimes is a must because if you have a large CD collection, it's a must. So instead of getting a separate CD ripper, you may opt in to get one that has one built in. Um, Rune Core, that's another feature we'll talk about later. But as you get more advanced into looking at streamers, there's more and more features that you will come to understand and appreciate because it's all separate functions that's thrown in there for extra value, for extra convenience, and that's really what all streamers are about. So here I've gathered some questions for you to ask yourself when you're looking for a streamer. Number one, do you need Wi-Fi or can you do hardwire? Usually hardwire is better at least for me, because Wi-Fi can drop in and out depending on your house situation. So if you can wire your you know, ethernet to connect directly to your streamer, that's more beneficial. Number two, compatibility. What services do you use? Tidal, Spotify, and so on. What devices do you use? Android, Apple, these are all compatibility issues that you should look at when you're looking for a streamer. Does the streamer support it? Number three, do you need just a streamer or DAC and preamp built in? Do you want to upgrade your DAC in the future? Then look for digital outputs. Number four, is internal storage and NAS drive important to you? Is other features like CD Ripper, subwoofer output, and so on important to you? Then look for these features as well. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you in deciding what streamer is and you know how to look for one for yourself. And you know what? That's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.